Hey guys, Joe here, and today's video is not sponsored by cough syrup, but I will be taking a lot of it. Here goes, glug, 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 glug. If you're new to the channel, why don't you give me a thumbs up, because where else can you go to get a dying hyena's laugh right during a cold opening? <coughs> Today, we're going to be taking a look at a beautiful pistol. It's a Sig Sauer, as you can tell by the Sig Sauer on the case. Not always the case, but I'm not going to lie to you, my friends. I am not going to lie to you. See, there is a firearm in there. Inside this very nice case, and it even has, I don't know if it's airline approved, but it's definitely made so that it's harder to reach into. This plastic case goes above and beyond because this lip here coincides with this lip to make it harder to get into the case. It's kind of weird that that kind of made me smile. But inside we have a very, very beautiful pistol. Let's set that aside for a second. Also inside the box you get your instructions down underneath this lower closed cell foam that's been cut to fit the pistol. You get two mags in the case, one in the gun for a total of three, standard with the MK or Mark 25 pistol. However, available when these pistols were released, especially the special edition different colored ones, were a carrying bag that also contained an additional two magazines. So this particular P226 MK Mark 25, I'm going to call it the Mark 25 from now on. Uh, there's no dot between the M and the K, so it's a Mark 25. However, this particular one came with five magazines. Now you're going to notice right away that this is a very uncommon color. The FDE treatment or the flat dark earth treatment, you don't normally see that on the Navy SEALs pistol, so this might be more of a decorative coating on here. Taking a look at the pistol, and I don't have a standard 226 with me to show you some of the differences, but we can talk about them. Number one is the decocker. If you can see here, the decocker is a slightly different color from the slide release and the takedown and the mag and the grips. That's because this is not the same material. These are actually carbon steel. This is not. Mark 25s come with a identifying badge here on the side of the slide as well as the anchor up by the P226 script. If it's missing either of those, I would question whether it's a real Navy one. However, there's a very, very easy way to tell whether or not this is a real Mark 25. Drop your mag, go ahead and lock your slide open. This gun has never been fired, that's why it still has the band here, so I'm trying to keep it that way. But you can see that nothing in there, we're empty. However, what I wanted to show you is actually right here at the front. As you can see, this 226 has a traditional 1913 style Picatinny rail rather than the Sig Sauer standard. If you look at them, you'll see that, it, and I'll put in a picture here, but a Sig Sauer normally 226 has a curved rail underneath. So some lights don't fit without an adapter or some lights just don't fit at all. This one will take any 1913 Picatinny rail accessory. Obviously, this one being a Navy SEALs edition, it does have Trijicon front and rear night sights, which are very beautiful, and pretty darn easy to pick up, even when you're three feet behind it off camera. And another difference, and you can see it here, is the checkering on the front strap is actually horizontal versus the traditional vertical. The vertical striations don't help as much when the gun recoils, the horizontal ones will. This side has the serial number and where it came from, but other than that, nothing on this side of the pistol. This is a double action, single action pistol, which means you can start just by using the trigger that will pull the hammer back and fire your first round. Or, however, if you rack the slide for your first shot, you will get the hammer in the rearward position and a much shorter trigger. However, unless another round chambers, you will go back into double action mode. This is a nitride finish on here. I tried to find how many of these were actually built in this color combination, and I can't find it. So let's just assume that this is the only one, and you should buy it from my buddy's store, Liberty Arms. Look it up in Harrisonburg, Virginia. If I link to it, it'll instantly demonetize the video. The trigger pull, for me, for the double action, feels very nice. It's a straight pull all the way back to here. You can feel a little bit of creep, and then just pull straight through, and it fires. 
The reset in double action mode is basically all the way out because you got to remember that it has to release the entire thing. Boom, and then you go into your next shot. However, single action mode. A little bit of take up, comes to a wall, and then it just breaks. And the reset is just about all the way out to single action mode. However, it's not like stagey or anything. It just goes out. Dink, dink. You can see why this was such a popular pistol for the Navy SEALs. I'm not going to get too crazy with this. However, I will pop the top off so you can see the internals. The easiest way to do that is to, again, safety check your firearm. We're going to lock the slide back and show you that it is empty. Nothing there. Nothing there. Firearm is empty. What you need to do is actually leave it locked all the way back and come here to your takedown lever. You pull it down 90 degrees, this gun has never been apart before as far as I know, or maybe it had the top off once, so it's very stiff. It will loosen up over time, and then you just drop your slide, and you pull it off. Inside the slide, you will see there are a couple of differences between the standard gun and the Navy guns. Number one, the guide rod is all metal. Typically, 226s have a plastic guide rod. Take note of the color here on the end, as this is the end that goes on the guide rod, should you take it apart. Barrel removal, super simple. It just uses the Browning breech lock, used in Glocks and CZs and all of those, and works perfectly. This is a black barrel with a chrome lining inside of it. They do that for corrosion protection because Navy SEALs, they're probably going to be slogging it out in places that are not the cleanest. Taking a look at the inside of the slide here, you can see it is exceptionally well finished. The coating is very nice on the inside as well, but you can see even where it has exposed steel, it is not all chewed up like some cheaper inferior pistols can be. Another note here, and some people take it as a point of contention, is that this gun has an external extractor versus most 226s, most don't get angry, have an internal. I can't speak as to why they made that change. I think it might have something to do with ease of maintenance of the firearm because you can get in there, air, oil, all that good stuff, and get it nice and lubed up. It's a very heavy slide. It is stainless steel, unlike some of the German guns, which were carbon steel. This is stainless steel to handle more pressure, so you can easily run plus P rounds. The frame. Again, is a pretty chunky piece. Overall, this gun weighs 34 ounces, but it has rails going the majority of the length of the frame. And back here, it's just cut here where the magazine and all the controls go. Unlike its newer brother, the 320, you can't just pop out the fire control group and put it in another frame. This frame goes to this gun, period. Obviously, it can be disassembled fully in order to change parts that break but this trigger group is meant to stay in this frame. The grip is kind of a pebble stippling, and it feels pretty good. It's not like super scratchy on the hand, but it's not like super loose either. Sometimes you can just slide on a gun. This one is not doing that to my hand. The hammer again is carbon steel, and it feels very nice. Let's go ahead and reassemble the firearm. After you've cleaned it, of course. This one doesn't look like it's even had any lube on the rails. However, there was some assembly lube in the decocker. But you grab your barrel, flip your slide over, carefully put your barrel in there, and there you go. Super easy, right? Just like a Glock, pretty much. Take your recoil spring, metal guy rod, again, red end down here. You want to make sure that it's flat all the way across the firearm so that when it goes back on the gun, it doesn't catch. Leaving the takedown in the 90 degree angle because it flattens out the piece down there. Little tip, sometimes you may need to push the takedown forward just a tiny bit with your finger just to make sure that it's actually flat to allow the entire gun to come back. Go ahead and bring it back. Lock the slide into position. Put your takedown lever back up. And you are back in business. Decocker springs back up into its ready-to-fire position as soon as you decock the pistol. Overall, what's my opinion on them? I've fired a 226 before, however, there are quite a bit of changes to this firearm. However, I like the way the 226 fires. I like an all-metal gun, 
I like guns that are feeling hefty in your hands. I like guns that feel like they're from the old world because stuff like this, this is over 40 years old, and you know what? It just works. This one is available for sale. We also have a black one, so if you're interested, reach out to us at the store. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to buy this pistol, but that would require like a lot of subs. So everybody that watches this video, sub, and we can get this firearm and take it to the range and actually shoot it. That would be cool, yeah. Anywho, I'm gonna get out of here. All of a sudden I can breathe a little bit and I have two other videos I need to film tonight. So if you like the video, thumbs up, comment down below. Let me know if you have one of these, how well it shoots, if you have both the regular and the Navy version, if there's much difference in it. Let me know what your favorite gun is and we will talk about that in an upcoming video. And keep your eyes open because again, I have more videos including an AR that was designed for a very special person. So that will be coming as well. I'm going to get out of here. Amazon links down below. Help the channel grow. Let's get some more toys for the channel. And as always, talk to you later.